Hello there. All right, on uh, this short video, we're going to show you how to rename a ZFS pool. We're not going to rename a boot pool or root pool. That's an unrecommended procedure, though it can probably be done. Uh, this is about renaming a pool that might contain, say, your data set or any number of other pools that are not the boot pool. Um, the step is uh, not very complicated. Let me share it with you here. To start with, we're at a command line uh, for a ZFS uh, environment, and I'll start it off with doing a ZFS list so you can see what's in there. And in particular, we're going to go ahead and rename this one. Uh, it's a 578 uh, gig available pool made up of three 300 gigabyte drives. And uh, I actually will start by creating a mount point to a directory so you can see the data still intact. So first we went ahead and did a mount. You're, gonna, you're not going to need to do this, of course. This is just so you can demonstrate uh, data goes along with this process. So we're just going to touch a text file, or actually a Vim text file, test.txt. Okay, we'll put some text in there, exit out. Now we have some text in that um, pool. And now we're going to go through the process of renaming that pool. So we've got our pool name right there. We're going to start off with zpool, export, and the name of the pool that we're trying to rename. It takes about 5 to 10 seconds. Of course, if you have a lot of data, it may take longer. I'm not really sure. Okay, now if I do a ZFS list, you'll notice that our data pool is missing. Now, if we run the command, if we want to see what pools are available to be imported, we can just do a Z pool import and it's going to show us any data pools that are out there that can be imported. So nothing's lost. And now we'll simply run the command Z pool import the, the old pool name and the new pool name. Okay, we'll hit enter. That process again takes about the same amount of time, maybe even a little less. Do a ZFS list and now we have data pool whatever and there is that directory that we created earlier and I'm just going to look in there and I expect to find a file called test. And there it is. And just to put a little insurance on that. We'll let you see that the file actually contains the data it's supposed to. Well, we're almost done here. Um, you'll notice when we earlier displayed the pools that were available, we had a Z pool with the Z pool import command, but adding nothing after it. It, it specifically stated, stated that some supported features are not enabled on this pool um, and the pool can be imported though some features will not be available without an explicit Z pool upgrade. So we're going to make sure that we upgrade that pool while we're at it. We'll upgrade any other pools and let's show you how that's done. Z pool upgrade dash A. That'll ensure that any pools are upgraded all at the same time. And you'll see in this case, it upgraded our backup pool as well as our data pool. And uh, the B pool upgrade is disabled to keep compatibility with the grub command. So that's it. Not too much to it. I hope this video uh, proves to be a value to you. Thanks very much to watch. Beep. So that's it. Not that much to it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this video helps you and your future quest to understand ZFS in the way that uh, having this to refer to will help me. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.